Good morning and glory to Jesus Christ. So you remember a few videos ago I posted that I had received a letter from someone on Texas death row who I did not know and who had actually found me from my contact information and had written, you know, reached out to me and his case was extraordinarily violent and gruesome and so it took me about a year to write him back because I just had to go through my emotions first about it, if that makes sense. This was an instance where I don't want to talk about it a whole lot in this video. Go back two or three videos, you're going to see that it, you know, it's the video with the big warning. It's like, you know, warning, if you don't want to hear gruesome murder details, press mute between this timestamp and that timestamp. So I will spare you that again here. But anyway, he wrote me back, or actually he typed me back, which is interesting, isn't it? Because here's, it's on steno paper too. So there's something strange about Texas. Actually, there's a lot strange about Texas. Texas loves to kill people. Um, their inmates don't seem to have access to pens because every letter with the exception of one I've gotten from this death row has been typed. So I don't know if that's because they don't want them like making syringes out of the pens or what. But anyway, I'm not going to read the letter because I don't kiss and tell. I lied. I'm going to read you a little bit of it, but without any of the personal identifying information in it. So he just says, um, Dear Daria, hello, what's up? I hope that all is well and that you are doing great. It was great to hear from you. Thank you for writing me back. Smiley face. To be honest, I was not expecting anything back from you, due to me just being used to sending letters out all the time to have nothing ever come back. So I am thankful that you wrote back at all. So no ma'am, you do not need to give me an apology at all or an explanation. Let's just try to get to know each other. I've had bad, bad issues with being judged from what the media says about me. The media is my enemy. They just say what they want to and what the police tell them to say. It's never close to what really happened. I know a little of what the media is saying about me from what people tell me. They're wrong on a lot of things. Anyway, if you could please just give me a chance and get to know me for what I am, for who I am, sorry, and not who the media says I am. Um, and I'm sorry for messing with your emotions. And then he just goes on and, you know, just gives me some kind of vanilla, you know, basic personal information. So, uh, it's a wonderfully upbeat letter for somebody on death row. And believe it or not, I've actually found that to be the case. I think sometimes these guys, you know, sorry for the rustling. I'm just trying to put that where it won't fall in my watermelon. By the way, best food ever, watermelon. Um, so I'm going to write him back. I'm very excited that he gave me such a gracious response. And I'm going to see how this friendship progresses. The only other thing that I wanted to mention, and it's related, is... When you're writing inmates to have fellowship with them, not even necessarily religious fellowship, but if you're writing to them but you are not looking for a boyfriend, just be aware of something. Be aware that prisoners are very bored in prison, right? That's actually the primary punishment for most of them is just being bored, you know? They are going to share what you write with other inmates and they are going to share your photos. Unless they're in a supermax. Supermax, of course, being you're in a cell by yourself 23-7. And you have recreation for one hour a day, but it's outside and it's, it's in a bullpen kind of thing with super, super, super high walls so that you can't see where you are in terms of the prison. You know, like you can't get your position triangulated from it and that's so you don't escape you know now as long as you don't send anything that's inappropriate that's probably fine i don't think it's a negative as a matter of fact i think it's kind of a positive because remember this dude i knew about his case before he wrote me and i had put him on my turkey file i was like i am not touching this with a 10-foot pole because this is so horrible but when I, you should have seen me at the post office i was like <laughs> Well, he wrote me, so hopefully that's providence, and I'm going to write him back and see what happens. So the, the other thing is, photos are good. I like to send him a photo of myself so they know who they're writing to, you know, because these guys, provided they're not being punished for something, they are allowed to have photographs in their cells. So you just send them, you know, like a photo of, you know, just your face. It doesn't have to be 
anything, you know, it doesn't have to be like a glamour shot, but just something so they can relate to you in some way, because you can go onto Google and you can look them up, but they do not have that ability. So it's, it's, it's nice. And I've also found that even if you send them stuff like photos from National Geographic, photos of, uh, I don't know, uh, outer space, I like to send photos of some of the, the nebulas that are so, they've been colorized and they're just so amazing and otherworldly. And it really can help them think beyond the bars, if that makes sense. So there's that. That's really about it. Just, oh, one more thing. Sorry. I keep saying that. That's it. Oops. Wait, one more thing. It's my, I'm refining my fake out technique. If you're going to do this, if you're going to actually write to people, get a P.O. box. I know I've said it before. I'm going to say it again. You need to get a P.O. box. And that's precisely why. It's because your name is going to get spread around. Now, I have never had anybody write me anything that was more than slightly inappropriate. Some of them are feeling out like, okay, are you really married? And if you're married, are you married married or are you wanting something on the side you know and most of them <laughs> they kind of think that's the case i had one accuse me of stepping outside of my marriage i was like by writing you and saying hello no and he was trying to convince me that i was bored with my marriage and i'm going yeah no 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 that's uh uh that, that's not what's going on here like i just want to know you as a person um so uh, related to that Use caution with what you send, and do not send form letters. Okay. Over Christmas, I, I actually did send a form letter, but I put on the top, this is a form letter. Because what happens is, let's say that I'm on death row, God forbid, and you're on death row, God forbid, as well. And if you and I are both pen pals with somebody, we may not even know it, that we're pen pals with the same person, and all of a sudden we both get a letter, and it's the same letter. I, for one, would feel like crap. I would feel like this person doesn't really care about me at all and has some kind of an ulterior motive, even if it's just for them to feel good about themselves for writing somebody in jail. Um, so their feelings will get very hurt. And yes, these guys have done some, some of the worst crimes you could imagine, but they are still human beings. And they still do bear the icon of Christ within themselves. So it's, it's not okay to do that. Um... I kind of wish that was obvious, but there's a lot of people who s seem to feel otherwise. I, I don't know. Anyway, now I really am going to end this video. It's supposed to be two minutes. I'm already at, what, almost eight. So, God bless you. God bless you extra hard. If you will please, please, please hit the like button and the share button and the, what's the other one? Subscribe. That's what we like, subscribers. So, thank you so, so, so much. And I will see you very soon. Have a good morning. Bye.